In this video, we're going to upgrade all the software for our robot to Humble. You see, when I first started this project for myself, Foxy was still the latest ROS distro, and then by the time I was doing the tutorials, Humble was kind of on the radar, but Humble is well and truly out now, and so it's time to upgrade. If you're just starting this project from scratch, I recommend you watch this video first so that you're aware of the changes and differences that come along with doing it in Humble. And then you can use Humble from the start the whole way through and you can refer back to this video if you need to as you go through the tutorials. As usual, we'll focus on the simulation first, making sure we can get everything up and going there before moving over to the actual robot and upgrading it. Also, this video is sponsored by Weekly Robotics. More on that later. So here I've got a brand new machine for development and it's running Ubuntu 22.04 Jammy. Now you might notice it looks a bit different to before. That's because I'm now running regular Ubuntu instead of Mate. And the reason for that is that this hardware is actually a little bit special. If you've got a keen eye, you might be able to guess what's special about it and you can leave a comment. But I went for regular Ubuntu just to avoid any issues with compatibility. Although it has been a bit of a bumpy road anyway and there'll be a whole video on that coming soon. Anyway, I've gone ahead and installed Ross Humble, the dev tools, and all the regular packages that we use as part of the tutorials. There's no surprises there, it's just that instead of typing sudo apt install Ross Foxy blah, it's Ross Humble blah. I've also already set up my network and my SSH key for GitHub, so I should be able to open a new terminal, create a workspace, so dev workspace slash source. We'll get into our workspace. And we want to clone the main package for our project. So for me, that's going to be github.com articubot1, but that'll be whatever your own thing is. And while we're here, we can also clone the ball tracker repo. So that's at git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash josh slash ball tracker and then we can get back to our workspace root and build it with colcon build simlink Oop. install there'll be some warnings there you can just ignore them all right now before we go and try and run anything i'm going to open up vs code and you can open up your directory i've already got mine open from earlier and so we'll go into source, Articubot1. The first thing that we're going to change is there's a bit of a change in ROS2 control. So we're going to go into launch sim here. And down here where we've got spawner.py for the differential drive controller and the joint state controller, we're going to change this .py to just spawner. So get rid of the .py, they've just changed the name of that executable. And we want to do the same thing while we remember here on the actual robot so that when we pull it over to the robot, everything works fine. So with that, we can rebuild if you didn't use Simlink install. Let's open a new tab, source our workspace, and ROS2 launch Articubot1 launch sim. And we'll set our world to be our regular one. So that should be running. We can get out our gamepad and we should be able to drive it around just like normal. So that was pretty painless. Now let's start getting things like the slam and nav2 and the ball tracking working. So I'm gonna open up a new tab here and we're gonna run Arviz. Now I was a bit slack with this in the past, but we're gonna deliberately run Arviz with sim time set. Um, it'll cause some problems with nav2 otherwise, and I wonder whether that might have something to do with other, other issues we've been having. So, ROS2 run rvs2, rvs2. I'm going to pass it the path to my config file. You can do that if you want. Now we want to type ROS args, and we want to set the use sim time to true. All right, for some reason I had to restart gazebo in there as well. But we should see Arviz is now up and running. We can see all our stuff. So let's start by trying to run the ball tracker. So we're going to open a new tab, source our workspace, and type ROS2 launch articubot1 ball tracker.launch.py, and we'll set sim mode Oop, to true. Our robot should start spinning around. It's looking for the ball. Now I've already set up the tennis ball object. So I'm just going to put it here, hopefully it'll find it. 
put it in a bad spot. Let's try there. Yep. And it's going to find the tennis ball and hunt it down. You should be able to see that on its camera in Arby's. So we'll stop that. Now let's see about running Slam. So we'll type ROS2 launch Articubot1. You might remember it was online async launch.py. And we'll set use sim time to true. So we'll add a map. And now as we drive our robot around, we should see it generates the map for Slam. Of course, we can go ahead and change our fixed frame and all that kind of thing. Not going to worry about that for now. Then the next thing we want to try is Nav2. Now, this isn't going to work out of the box because a bunch of things have changed. You might remember that last time what we did was we copied the launch and parameters files from the Nav2 bring up repo into our own, and we're going to do that again. So we're going to go copy uh, slash opt ross humble share nav to bring up then from the launch directory we're going to take navigation launch.py and we're going to copy that into source articulate one launch navigation.launch.py and then we're going to do the same thing with the params file so this is exactly what we would have done as part of the original tutorial Now, of course, we had to make a couple of changes to those files. What we're actually going to do this time, we're going to leave the nav2 params file alone. We're going to leave it exactly as it is come through from, from the repo. But we're going to go to the navigation launch.py. And you might remember we had to change this to the name of our own repo. So whatever the name of your repo is there. And then in my case, there was also this params path here. That's the name of this directory. So ours was config instead. So that'll just make sure it loads up the correct config file. So uh, I'm gonna rebuild with Colcon just in case. We shouldn't need to. And then once that's done, we can source our workspace, ROS2 launch, uh, tickybot1, navigation launch.py, and use sim time set to true. Okay, so Nav2 is running now, but I actually had the whole system get stuck in there yet again. And that is a topic I did want to raise, which is that I was having some of these kinds of issues on Foxy, but they seem to be even worse on Humble. I was hoping that they'd get better. I think it might be something to do with uh, the way Gazebo and ROS2 control are interacting. I don't seem to have this problem on the real robot, but it just seems to get really confused around transforms and timing and that sort of thing and you just have to stop everything and start it again to get it going. If anyone knows what the problem is there and has a fix for it, I'd love to hear it. But anyway, Nav2 has launched now, so we should be able to take 2D goal pose and set it to somewhere on our map and have the robot go follow it. So that's everything working on simulation. As you can see, there weren't really too many changes required to get everything to work with Humble. So we can now take those changes that we made to our package, push them back up to Git, ready to pull back down onto the robot. Before we move on to upgrading the Pi, I just want to take a minute to talk about this video sponsor, and that's Weekly Robotics. You see, our industry moves pretty fast and it can be hard to keep up. I mean, here I am making a video on all the things you've got to do differently, just to work with a slightly newer version of software. And in the past, I've seriously thought to myself, I wish instead of having to follow a bunch of different tech news sites, someone could do that for me and they could go through it all and handpick the most important and relevant robotics news and deliver it to me in one simple format. Weekly Robotics solves that problem. All you gotta do is head over to weeklyrobotics.com, check your email address in the box and hit subscribe. While you're there on the front page, you can check out the latest newsletter and you can also go to the archive to see all the stuff that you've missed out on in the past. And the best part is, it's all completely free. So don't miss out on the latest robotics news. Head over to Weekly Robotics and subscribe right now. Don't worry, I'll still be here waiting for you. So our dev machine is all upgraded to Humble now. Let's focus on the robot and upgrading the Pi itself. Now we've got the Pi. This time it is Ubuntu Mate, and I've gone ahead and installed SSH, ROS, and all the usual packages from the tutorials, including Python 3 Serial, V4L Utils, ROS Humble V4L2 Camera, and ROS Humble RP LiDAR ROS. 
I've also added the user to the video and dial out groups, same process as the old version, and remember that this won't take effect until we log out. But there are some other things that we want to do before we do that. The network setup was basically the same. If you're using NetPlan like I am, then be aware that now instead of setting a gateway, you want to set a default route, but that just achieves exactly the same thing. And obviously I've also fixed up the screen rotation problem. Before we go ahead and clone our code, there are a few other things we need to fix. Out of the box, it seems like Jeremy is broken with some serial devices, including the Arduino Nano clone that I'm using. This is because it conflicts with some other software that's running to support a braille terminal. I think this kind of accessibility is really cool. I'm glad they're putting those kind of things in there. But unfortunately, our robot needs motors that work, not a braille terminal. So I had to remove it with sudo apt remove brltty. And for me, I've already removed it, but you can just follow the prompts and get rid of that. Another problem we'll run into is that the way the Pi talks to cameras by default has changed. There's probably a way to make this work properly with a new driver, but instead we're going to reinstate the legacy driver. And the way that I found online to do that is that we want to edit with root slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt and then go down to the bottom. We'll find this section here that says camera auto detect. That'll be set to one and you want to change it to be zero. And then you want to add this extra line here that is start underscore x equals one. Now that should be all the changes that we need. At this point, I recommend restarting the Pi to make sure that everything has applied, but I've already done that here, so I won't worry. Once you've restarted, this is a good opportunity to check that our serial still works using miniterm. And it's worth noting that in 2204, instead of the command being miniterm, it's now pi serial dash miniterm. And that should work just the same as it did before. With that all done, we can finish setting up using the dev machine over SSH. Now it's time to start cloning our packages, and so of course we need to make a workspace first. So we'll do that with make dir p robot ws slash source, and we'll get into that source directory. And we'll clone our main package, so for me that's articubot1. And in my case, I want to check out the humble branch. The first problem we're going to run into now is the ROS2 control hardware component. The one I originally wrote is for Foxy and is totally incompatible with Humble, but thanks to Buzzology and Sig Robotics for their port. I haven't merged it into the main repo yet because I want to rethink some aspects of it and dedicate a whole video to a tutorial on writing a hardware component. So instead, for this video, we're just going to clone Buzzology's repo, and then in the future, you should be able to just clone my one and check out the Humble branch. So we'll go git clone http hub.com slash buzzology slash diff drive arduino and then we specifically want to check out the commit 3883 c00 all right and the other dependency we have there is still the serial library so we'll clone that from my fork of it so git clone and we'll head back up to our root and build it with colcon So of course we can source our workspace and launch it like normal. Oops. Then in a new terminal on the dev machine, I'm going to get into its workspace and launch the joystick. So hopefully when we move the joystick, the wheels should turn. We should also be able to run RViz on this one. See our robot driving around, so that's all working, that's great. We can try launching the camera driver. And we'll check that one with RQT image view. So there we go, we got the camera. And what about the LiDAR? So, whoop, RP LiDAR. Uh, 
and we'll check that one in Avis. Sure enough, there we go. If we give it a bit of a shake, we should see the data wiggling around a bit. Now that our sensors and motors are working, we can check our applications still work. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Whether you started out with Foxy and you need to upgrade or you're starting out fresh from scratch with Humble. If you do have any troubles, there's a link in the description to the corresponding thread over at the Articulated Robotics Discourse Forum. Leave a reply there and I'll try to help out. Thanks again to Weekly Robotics for sponsoring this video. And thanks as always to the patrons over at Patreon for making these videos possible. If you want to support the channel and you'd also like full access to the Discord and Discourse servers, then head over to Patreon and sign up there. If you've been following along with this project and you're watching this video as it comes out, then the next video is going to be some general improvements and fixes and clean up on both the hardware and the software side. However, I've also got a bunch of other things brewing in the background, so stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time.